Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, data guy here. And today I got a very cool and fun video for you on Ask Astro, which is the Airflow AI. Um, so not obviously, you know, every company, big buzzword these days, AI, what are we doing AI? Um, and so even though it's called Ask Astro and it's by the astronomer team, uh, specifically Julian Leneve, uh, Caxel, Michael Gregory, um, and it is really just designed towards being an AI for open source or airflow. Uh, and then obviously because astronomers built on open source airflow, some astronomer questions as well. But I'm just gonna focus on kind of the utility for of it for just regular day airflow work. Um, and so number one, it is trained on the most recent airflow uh, syntax, the most recent airflow uh, information. So unlike if you'd ever use an AI for generating airflow DAGs, really any airflow code, because it was trained on everything before 2021, it would miss out a lot of the most recent features like the Tassel API, you know, passing data between tasks kind of in that functional style rather than through uh, um, XCOMs and just was kind of restricted in some of the code that it could make. Whereas now you have uh, a pretty robust Airflow API that can really, you know, if I say, hey, write me an Airflow DAG that performs some ETL operation uh, to process, transform Spark data and then store it in a Snowflake database. I actually been misspelled and I want to put and there instead. Um, but super useful tool for just, you know, generating that first framework of a DAG. So you don't have to spend all the time, you know, writing all your package imports, writing your DAG definition, uh, you know, writing all the fields out for Spark's mid job operator, uh, for Snowflake operator and making it so, hey, you know, I just come in here, I fill out the functional criteria. So, you know, pointing it to my Spark connection, pointing it to whatever files I'm trying to run or data I'm trying to pull, and then, you know, move from there. Obviously, you don't probably massage this DAG, but it really just takes that initial learning curve up to Airflow and condenses it. So, you know, you can write your own Airflow DAGs really easily without really any Airflow knowledge, um, and just kind of have Ask Astro. And it also just can kind of act as, you know, an airflow debugging buddy. So here I also have, you know, when I was running a task, I got an error um, around a value error. And so if you ask it, you know, questions around errors, you'll see that it can also provide you, you know, hey, here's some suggestions on what you might want to do to fix this here. Um, and you can kind of also help train it by saying, hey, this was actually a good answer. This was a bad answer because all this information is then fed back into the uh, Ask Astro AI as well. And I'll kind of go in the back end in a second and show you how it all works. Um, but this is, you know, every AI model is as good as, it is, as its user feedback. So as long as you pr keep providing good user feedback and say, hey, you know, this is uh, actually helpful or not, and this is pretty helpful. Uh, so here, you know, just give me a couple different ways I can solve through finding out why my data is being read in as a parquet file. Um, and it did end up being. Um, something with the training data. So really cool functionality there. Uh, you know, I can go, hey, is this correct? So yes, this did help me. And then another thing is that you can also copy the URL of your request. So if you're working with the team or maybe you're like, hey, you know, check out this answer from Ask Astro, you can just send them a link to it. So unlike other AI providers, and this isn't meant to be like a bash on that other AI providers, like there's good reasons why they don't do this, but just makes it useful for, hey, you know, I can go take some DAG that someone's generated and then go extend it for my own purposes, ask Astro to customize the DAG, add additional functionality, do whatever, without meaning to like copy and paste the DAG in um, and then ask it to, you know, basically do the same operations it did for that other person. So you can see here any uh, previously asked questions that are coming up uh, frequently. So you can see here seven sources, people asking, how do I integrate Snowflake with Astro? Astro? They'll be surfaced kind of on this homepage um, where you'll see, hey, here's some question and answer that a lot of people have found uh, useful. Um, and you know, I'll give it an upvote too. And so here down as well, you'll notice for every single uh, response, it'll also give you the sources it made for that response. So this way, if you want to go fact check uh, it based on the actual documentation or you want to go deeper on a certain subject, you have the resources here to kind of go in and figure out, hey, you know, this is where it went wrong. And now I want to actually learn how, you know, 
what some of the fields in the external Python operator maybe are doing and how I can configure it in a way that would work for me. So I love the source thing as well, just because, you know, that way ChatGPT definitely especially has some kind of like weird things. So we'll just give you the random answer. Um, and so seeing the sources on it is pretty cool. Um, and I think that is kind of all there's around asking questions for it. So, you know, please go take this, try it out yourself. Um, also, you know, you can extend any of these threads. So sick, what's the best way? And this also is up to 10,000 tokens. So you can like dump full DAGs in here, tons of code. It can read it all, it can parse it all. It's pretty well trained. So the way this was all built was on this framework developed by Andreessen Horowitz, uh, big H16Z guy, big AI guy, where he basically, let me pull it up. Um, he plotted out this LLM application architecture that he you know, said, hey, these are what all the big uh, players are using, where you can see, you know, it's, hey, bringing in contextual data, using data pipelines, using AI, open AI, cohere, hugging face for embedding, vector databases for storing that embedded kind of condensed information, APIs and plugins that you're using to actually manage it all, orchestration powered by Airflow as well. You have playgrounds, which is exactly what you saw there, that Ask Astro playground where I'm asking questions, you know, trying to get responses out of the AI in an unstructured way. Um, and then you have, um, you know, your app hosting. So this is just how you're surfacing responses, uh, local satching of that LLM. So you notice you're not storing the whole LLM or something to download it to get responses. So it's kind of a smaller version of it. Logging uh, LLM ops. So monitoring your uh, the pro different properties of your large language model um, to make sure, hey, it's still continuing to uh, train, still you know operating properly, validating your responses, making sure that's continuing to provide valid responses to your end users. And then you have some different APIs, cloud provider for actually running the infrastructure to power your AI, um, APIs for you know calling different models in, um, and also just different ways that you're gonna be transforming and massaging your data there. So this was what we copied or what was copied for the Ask Astro AI. Oh, and also uh, Felipe Gagnon, uh, Carter Fulcher and Katie Brady. So thank you for helping out with this as well. Um, and so if you wanna go check it out, just go to GitHub, uh, Strong Ask Astro. So you can kind of see the first section is, you know, data retrieval and embedding. We have uh, obviously bringing in air information about airflow from documentations. Uh, as markdown files, Slack messages, uh, error requests, feature requests, just, you know, information that we're collecting as a company around uh, people's questions about Airflow. Um, then also just our own documentation from Astronomer, GitHub issues around Airflow, uh, bringing that all into Langchain to process it, kind of condense that information, um, split it in chunks for loading and embedding with OpenAI. So OpenAI, we're using that to embed chunks. And basically what that is, is doing is, taking our chunks of uh, you know, information around airflow, loading it as embedded vectors, which are vectors that kind of condensed units of uh, unstructured data. So you know, imagine a sentence gets condensed into one vector and then writing that all into WeVA, which is just a dedicated vector database. Um, then down here under prompt orchestration. So the way the end user looks at it is, you know, hey, they're going to ask a question. I'll zoom in here so you all can see this. So here, ask a question, you have the web app just, you know, posted via Cloudflare. Uh, there's a Slack bot too, if you're uh, in, I think the Airflow uh, Slack or the Astronomer Slack, uh, they can make a prompt. The prompt gets broken up with Langchain, rewords with AI, uh, open AI, or this is all happening within Langchain, but gets reworded. So just taking your question, asking a couple different ways to get as many responses as possible, then searching the vector database for uh, previous prompts, looking at what the responses to those prompts were, uh, looking at the docs to figure out, hey, what is the accurate response to these prompts? Um, and then making, using that large language model to determine what the most accurate answer is. Then that information is surfaced back to the end user um, and also stored within Langchain to be then be processed um, and added to the LLM training. And then that also, what happens now in feedback loops, the way you get your kind of feedback in there is you can respond you know, by rating that answer correct or not correct then we will fetch, hey, input what the prompt was, what the response was, and whether you thought it was useful or not. Then we'll classify that uh, prompt response and feedback saying, hey, was it correct? Was it useful? Um, did it break any of our safety parameters? 
And then if it's a good answer, we're going to store it right into our Vector database for use in future answers. And also mark it as good to show on the Ask Astro homepage. If it wasn't uh, marked as good, then it will um, not, it just won't be saved. Um, so this is going to continue being evolved, um, continuing uh, to be built upon as more and more users use this. So please go out there, try it out. Um, it is really, really helpful. It's not just, you know, you have to use Astro to use it. It is for anyone that is using Airflow and it's all open source. So if you want to take this, you know, you want to tweak it, you want to use it internally, deploy it locally, or even just use it as an example for how you want to train your own large language model, go crazy. Um, it is just a really, really cool project. I'm going to give it a star right now too. Um, and yeah, so please, please go check it out. And uh, I hope it answers all of your questions and more and makes all of your dreams come true. Um, so have a good one. Data guy out. Peace.